for taking the time to spend with us today to talk about an important piece of our business. Uh, obviously, the valve seats and valve train is critical to the uh, engines of today. So we want to talk a little bit about some of the pieces that are important in that. So um, the first piece we want to talk about, uh, this is a quick little picture. You saw the little video that we're, we did. We're very proud of all of our employees and uh, our 70 years in business. A little quick snapshot of the inside of our building. Turbine's been around for 70 years. Uh, we're uh, Oliver White Class A and ISO. So we've been doing it uh, a little while and uh, still trying to be sure we figure out how to do it right. Each day is a, a new adventure, but uh, for the most part, we get it done pretty well. So we want to talk about powder metal valve seats today, a very important part of our business going forward. A um, little picture here of powder, and uh, the powder itself is uh, what we start with versus a, uh, a hot uh, cast pour. So why powder metal? Well, powder metal is a, a metallurgy uh, piece that can be used in the head design, and it's used in powder metal seats and guides, so popular. Uh, it's a combustion process is subject to the cylinder head and three major stresses. These are very important because the engines of today have uh, additional stresses on them, including thermal stress, uh, as a result of the expansion and contraction of the head as it goes through the normal operating cycle of the cold start, warm up, running, and shutdown. Friction stress occurs primarily between the valve stem and the valve guide. As the valve opens and closes, there's significant friction between the valve and the seat due to relative motion. Also impact stress as a result of the force of the valve striking the valve seat as it closes. So the next step in technology, uh, powder metal is certainly the next step uh, on the OE front, an effort to make engines with tighter clearances, smoother finishes, better performance than ever before. After a customer spent several thousands of dollars having one of these engines rebuilt, he or she would not be satisfied with less than new performance, mileage, and certainly emission levels. In today's market, the only way a rebuilder can restore light new performance is to produce a rebuilt engine with clearances, finish, and precision it had when new. Otherwise, the engine performance and customer satisfaction could be compromised. So powder metal, it's a process, not a product. There's no standard mixtures for powder metal components. The mix is usually tailored for a given application. In one sense, powder metal is a metallurgist's dream come true because the process creates a totally uniform and homogeneous mixture of even the most complex alloys. In order to do that, we mix a, a number of alloys together um, to make the, the right uh, durability and other parts that need to go into it. This is a, a blender where the powder is put into it in several different forms, mixed together to make that homogeneous type of product that we need. One of the things that's really important on uh, powder metal or valve seats in general is the smoothness of the surface. At a microscopic level, cast metal surfaces are rough and jagged, which increases friction and accelerates wear. <coughs> Powder metal is a smoother surface. Any surface irregularities in powder metal tend to be smooth, spherical shapes, not jagged edges. These surfaces act like microscopic ball bearings, further reducing friction and wear. This is just a little picture of the uh, press and uh, a part coming through it. So as that goes in, it goes into uh, the powder into a hopper. And that hopper is uh, fed into a series of dies. And the dies uh, compact at 100 tons. And at 100 tons, it creates a net-shaped part. Pretty amazing in comparison to doing it the old-fashioned way, where you're trying to uh, pour hot metal out of a ladle into forms. And those uh, become much more difficult. This uh, process of doing seats is used in many different things. but Quite a unique process, not a particularly all new process, primarily done in the 70s and 80s. 
the internal consistency is really important. So by doing it in a cold press, it has no voids, it has no uneven distribution of alloys, and the powder has a smooth, consistent internal structure. The more uniform a metal's internal structure is, the more predictable and consistent its response is to change in operating conditions. This is a typical picture of a powder metal product. On the left-hand side, the little dot is a one thousandths dot. On the right-hand side is a cast product. And nothing wrong with cast products. We use cast products for ever and ever and ever and ever. And, but the nature of the technology of pouring it in a hot form uh, allows that to be moved in different places. And you can potentially get a gas pocket or you can get a hard spot. That's just the way the process is. Um, so with the powder, means it's pressed cold. Um, it's pressed cold and it's going to have the uniform consistencies all through the product wherever it may go. This is a, another small picture of a new press we just recently purchased. And um, it's uh, pretty elaborate. It's an upgrade from some presses we had previously, but does a great job of uh, making a product that's very consistent and um, comes up with all the necessary pieces we need to be sure it's a, a, a quality piece. Another quick picture of the, the dies going together and seats coming out of it. So precision fit is also important. The smoother and more surface of the powder metal part allows tighter tolerances for fit and performance. Run out on a powder metal valve seat is typically about 1,000. Cast seats can run out as much as three to five thousandths. That's a big difference when trying to maintain the tightest possible seal in the combustion chamber. Obviously, with the new emissions that we have today, uh, that's a critical piece to keep that tolerance very tight and to make sure there's no leakage. So when you um, machining a uh, valve seat, the powder metal looks a bit different. It's a fine chip that comes off of it because of the nature of the product. And when you're machining a, uh, a cast product, it comes out in a kind of a curly string, just a little bit different in the look. It's lightweight. Um, not that it makes much difference in a valve seat, but it does in a lot of different things. Um, they're used in connecting rods and all kinds of other things in the car. Average of about 33 pounds of powder metal content in a, uh, a new car today. So it's, it's very advantage uh, for uh, the, the size, the parts, the, the net shape, um, the productivity of trying to make these things. So it's a pretty popular item. Some people wonder about the strength of a powder metal part. And there's been some confusion over that over time. The powder metal part is strong as the surface hardness is better, withstands repeated impact. Combination of strength and lightweight gives powder metal an excellent strength to weight ratio, a critical factor in building lightweight, high performance engines. Interesting enough, most uh, cars with the, like the new Corvettes use powder metal connecting rods. So you can see that it's a very strong product. Uh, interesting enough, when the product is made and it comes off the press, comes off in what we call a green state, it hasn't gone through a sintering furnace yet. So that part you can actually break. But after it goes through the sintering furnace, you can take the, the seat and you can bounce it off the floor uh, 20 feet in the air and it's not going to break whatsoever. Another just shot of uh, a powder metal press that's uh, putting these products together. Pretty elaborate types of pieces of equipment. We do a lot of machining to it too as far as <clears throat> sometimes after the fact, with IDs, uh, one good thing about uh, a powder metal product is it can have uh, features put into it. <clears throat> For instance, it can have ID features put into it. So instead of having a straight bore piece of uh, a valve seat that you have to work and work on, it can have a, an ID feature uh, that you just go in and, and kiss the inside of the ID. 
tapes on tooling and tooling life. This is a, <clears throat> our sintering furnace. So after it goes through that uh, uh, press, it goes into the sintering furnace. The sintering furnace has a number of uh, different stages throughout it to uh, uh, mold the product together and, and put it into its hardened state by the time it comes out the other end. <clears throat> so it's a pretty elaborate process as well to make it the product that it needs to be for consistency and longevity. One of the great things with uh, powder metal as well, it has the uh, ability to have lubricants. So lubricants be blended into the powder to further reduce friction. Powder metal valve guides have tighter guide to stem clearance, which means it needs less oil lubrication because of their built-in lubricants. <clears throat> the lubricants in a powder metal seed is perfect complement to those powder metal guides. The tightened clearances help eliminate emissions. So within those uh, lubrications, you can have free graphites and other things. So obviously when you're trying to get emissions out of the uh, car, you want to uh, eliminate the oil that's lubricating and change that lubrication to other things that can be in the material, including the free graphites. It also has a better heat transfer so the homogeneous consistency of a powder metal seat, especially in a uniform shape, like a valve seat, means faster and more consistent heat absorption and transfer. The seat most closely follows the cylinder head expansion and contraction as thermal loads change, maintaining a tighter seal. Powder metal seats are also more effective in removing heat from the combustion area and transferring it into the cooling system. So I like this at times to say, okay, People look at it and say, well, a seat's just a seat. It's just a ring. It looks like a ring. Well, of course it does look like a ring. But if you look at it a little bit further into it, and you're saying, okay, I'm going to rebuild a, an engine, and I have uh, uh, a dome top pistons that are in the engine, and for some reason one of them uh, has a problem, would you consider putting a flat top piston in in the, in the other space that needed a new piston? No. I don't think you'll do that. Well, by the same token, when you're looking at a um, head and you say, well, there's a couple of valve seats that need to be changed, and you're considering putting in a different type of product that doesn't have the same heat transfer as a powder metal product, then maybe you're compromising that head a bit. So our recommendation is that when you're going to be changing out seats, you change out all the seats, or you put in at least seats that are equivalent to the OE seats that would have been at the factory so that the heat dissipation will be the same for all of them. Another important part of um, seats is uh, uh, reducing and micro welding. So depending on the ZAC formulation, powder metal surfaces, oxides, can reduce and eliminate micro welding between the seat and the valve. Even at very high compression temperatures, micro welding accelerates valve seat and seat wear that reduces combustion chamber sealing. So what happens at times, of course, as uh, you run particularly LPG fuels, LPG fuels have uh, little to no uh, lubricants within them. So they have a chance of, of doing some micro-welding between the, the valve and the valve seat. So we have a, a patented process that puts oxides into our seats, that being the 70,000 series and 90,000 series, which almost reduces to eliminate uh, the micro-welding that can happen. So the uh, ability to uh, make the um, engine last in an LPG application is critical to keep that micro-welding uh, away. So also better retention in the solder head. Our seats have been cycle cast in cast heads up to 1,850 degrees with as little as 2%, uh, 2, 2 thousandths, excuse me, press, and they won't fall out. Even in aluminum soda heads, you only need 4,000. Now, obviously, each builder does it in their own way, and they have um, expectations of what they would like to have for press fit. This is just an example of uh, the tests that we have run. It also has a unique spring action of the matrix that holds tension against the counterbore. Some machinists will tell us 
They're too easy to install. <coughs> Excuse me. These valve seats have a perfect compression strength and a radius on the bottom edge. This allows you to press these into the counterbore with less force. This means that you're less likely to pull any cylinder head material when you're installing them and ensures that you have the press fit that you want. It is their uh, unique structure and the spring action that allows for this. Bottom of valve seats. <coughs> we offer uh, uh, four different series and those different seats. We have a 30,000 series, which is for uh, unleaded fuel, 70 for dry fuels, 90 for dry fuels and extreme duty. The 70 and the 90 both have those oxides put into them. And as they go from a 30,000 series to a 70 to a 90, some of the things change in the structure and you will be more tungsten, so it's a, a bit more extreme. We also have what we call the killer BC, which we'll talk about in more length coming up. So, excuse me, in our catalog, we uh, show each one of these grades of, of uh, seats and it shows the chemical composition within them so that you can evaluate that for your possible applications you need. So there's the 70 and the 90. So machinability, that's another thing that's interesting. Our patented metallurgical process produce small spherical uh, tungsten carbides and special lubricating alloys. The 30,000 series is a hard valve seat, which machines almost like cast iron. The 70,000 is a dry fuels for good machinability. The 90 is for extreme. Most shops tell us that they can cut about 50% more seats between the tooling sharpening or stone dressing. So machinability is a big thing. They do machine differently than a cast seat. So when you're machining those, you typically, if you're running a surgery, you might be running it at about 650 RPM. And so you're going to start out a little bit slow and then uh, get into it and finish it up. When you see the finish on it, when it's done, it shines like a, a, a mirror. It's a great finish. And the reason it has such a great finish to it is because it's a, a fine uh, uh, particles within it that machines up to that level. Interesting with the uh, uh, powder metal seats, they actually get harder after installed. So these seats actually work hard. So once they're installed and operating, uh, you'll see that uh, it's soft and easier when you machine it, but it translates to longer tool life and greater productivity. After the installation, the seat will become harder while the engine is running. So if you pull a seat or a head off and you're trying to do some machining to it again, you'll say, man, these seats are really, really hard. Well, they, they get harder, and it, every time it uh, hits the valve back and forth, it tends to get a bit harder, so the longevity is much better. And as you see, that most of those seats last a long time for the OE. So it's uh, great for the uh, engine and for uh, longevity. Um, just an ad that we run with the uh, technology has changed. And basically, as we said, Joe said in the beginning, you know, I like this to uh, uh, just simply a change in technology. Technology changes with uh, uh, the drum brakes to disc brakes and uh, carburetors to uh, fuel injection. And so as technology changes, it's incumbent to be able to keep up with that technology. And this is a product that will allow you to do that, even though there have been a number of myths about it, uh, the type of product it is. So now we're going to talk about uh, our killer B seats. And uh, you think this looks a little goofy. You see the little guy here. So here's how we came up with this. We uh, have a couple of pieces, and particularly from the General Motors, which will show you an article from him. But uh, on the LS3, they were having uh, extreme difficulty trying to get those uh, um, uh, seats to live in that particular engine because of the extreme amount of heat. So General Motors redesigned that head and redesigned it with a 
what we call a copper infiltrated seat. And so we came up with a little uh, V that we have here as just a marketing piece. But as you guys primarily know, if uh, guys, and I, I say this with no disrespect, but the uh, some of the folks in the in the South will say, give me some of them yellow seats, maybe copper beryllium, right? So these are uh, not quite a copper beryllium. So it's a, a seat that uh, um, has a honey hue to it. And uh, the GM engineer, when he designed them, he said these were the killer seats to make this thing last. So our brilliant marketing uh, executives here decided to use this as a, a killer bee. So just a little silly marketing piece. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, the um, LS3 uh, put in the high-tech copper infiltrated seats. These aren't particularly new to some applications. They're uh, used at BMW and Mercedes for this technology. But what it is, it's a, a seat that's made on the powder metal press. And then it has a, a wafer, copper wafer, that goes on the top of it. And uh, it goes through the sintering furnace. As it goes through the sintering furnace, it puts about 15% free copper into the microstructure of the seat. And this allows the heat to be transferred uh, very quickly out of the uh, exhaust side. And as you probably know, about 75% of the uh, heat is uh, uh, dispersed through the exhaust side of the engine. So it's very, very important. And this allowed them to be able to make that head work as it was redesigned. So there's a little picture of the um, product. You can see the little copper seat that goes on top of the wafer. And again, that wafer uh, doesn't stay like that. It's uh, infiltrated into the pores of the seat. And then you get the seat that shows as they are the three seats after that. So the good news is we have that technology to be used. Uh, we offer it for a number of different uh, applications. We have uh, uh, that being used uh, for um, both GM and for Chrysler. And we also have uh, uh, people like uh, Dart that uses it in their um, heads, both intake and exhaust, uh, thinking that it has another huge advantage of trying to get heat out so this is a little cold from the engineer. This is the killer LS3 copper infiltrated exhaust valve seat. So um, pretty good uh, accolade from them. What it offers is uh, superior conductivity, getting the heat out. It's uh, excellent in machining, has a high thermal expansion, a lowest wear improved reliability and durability, superior surface finishes, suitable for uh, HD intake and exhaust seats, gas and diesel, are compatible with most uh, valve materials. <clears throat> so again, another sheet, uh, as I showed before, this goes through the specifics of what it is. It also has a comparison on the bottom of it, uh, which shows a chemical composition for our particular one, it's Killer B versus the actual GM uh, seat composition. And the GM composition, as you'll see, has about that same amount of 15% copper that's put into it to get the heat out. This is uh, some recent articles that's been uh, out in the uh, Engine Professional magazine. And a uh, problem with Chrysler. Chrysler was having problems with the 37, 47, 57, and 61, and having problems with uh, seats dropping. and uh, their engineers worked, uh, the Chrysler engineers worked with some of our uh, major rebuilders to try to figure out a fix to it. And uh, the fix to it after they went through some of this to determine uh, the problem was a matter of uh, several things. One is the potential of uh, the, the press fit. Uh, another is the depth of the seat. And final and most important, is to be able to put that copper infiltrated uh, piece within the seats. So they've recommended that those seats and those heads have the copper infiltrated type of product in there to be able to get that heat out of there, which 
uh, it keeps the from the seats dropping and uh, allows that uh, to get its maximum uh, potential. This is uh, the article I mentioned to you. This is the um, General Motors engineer who uh, explains about the seats. And uh, as you can see there, he talks about the uh, LS seat. So it's a, a really great product and not something we just dreamed up in our backyard. It's uh, something that's pretty uh, uh, prevalent with uh, major OEs. Another little article that explains a little bit more. You may see it in some advertisements. Uh, this particular piece here <coughs> shows those particular applications that were identified by Chrysler and the applications for those uh, different uh, 4 liter, 4.7, 5.7, and the General Motors LS3 that will allow you to uh, bring those up to speed. And these uh, uh, copper infiltrated seats are primarily in the exhaust side, so it has a regular 70,000 in the intake and a, a copper infiltrated seat in the exhaust. Exhaust, again, is the spot which needs the most amount of, of heat dissipation. So this is a quick little uh, video of uh, just uh, a, a machining process of a, of a seat, and this is on a new one. So obviously there's there's new ones that do single point. There's also series that do different types of uh, regular machining. There's uh, stones. There's all kinds of things. So this is just a quick little peek of a single point doing a powder metal seat. And this video is intended to demonstrate the flexibility of Nguyen's fixed turning process. So that's kind of interesting. Um, as you know, there's lots of different ways to machine uh, valve seats, whether it be a number of products, or it's a, a single point, or fixed cutters, or variable cutters, or stones, lots of different ways to do it. Uh, this uh, little article here is also about uh, uh, 
the advantages of the killer bee type of seeds in high performance heads. Uh, this was a, a LS3 cylinder head dart that uh, did a uh, big job of trying to get a lot of horsepower out of it and the durability of that product and how that holds up. So interesting little article. The final article here is one by uh, a person we know very well, uh, Chuck Lynch, worked for Jasper for many, many years, is now a um, representative for AERA, and he uh, gave us some additional information recently about uh, valve seats cutting impacts and so forth, some practical knowledge. And then you can see uh, Chuck Lynch there in the corner. Interesting little article again for talking about valve seats in general. So that's kind of the story of uh, bottom of the valve seats. <coughs> again, uh, just a technology change and something for you to consider. The OEs are primarily out of metal, and uh, I think it has great attributes to it, uh, taking nothing away from our previous ones we had. And CAST was a great product and did a great job, still does, but this is uh, moving on to different technologies, and you should be aware of, of that, and then uh, be sure to know what the potential myths are advantages so that you can speak to your customers and to your employees about here's the things that might be of consideration to you. So we thank you very much for listening to our presentation today. Hopefully it will be of some value to you for educational purposes and will guide you to, with many other things, new technologies which can enhance the durability of the product and the machine that you're doing and the quality rebuilds that you do today.